let's do a walkthrough on how to get started on YouTube. Everything you're gonna need from lights, sound, cameras, action. All right, so seriously, let's start talking about what you actually need to get started on YouTube. From the camera, to the lights, to the sound, you name it, we're gonna cover it in this video. This is just the basics on how to get started nothing too in-depth. We're not going to talk about how to create a YouTube account. We're not going to talk about how to create a Google account. It's going to be strictly on the equipment you need and what you need to do to start shooting your first video. All right, so let's start with the obvious. The first thing you're going to need is a camera. Now, this could be something as fancy as a DSLR or a mirrorless camera or something as simple as your cell phone. Are you? This will do. I've actually shot vlogs with my cell phone, worked just fine. Sound quality is a little bit off on the cell phone, but you can add microphones to that to get that going. Now, you don't need to spend a fortune to get a camera that actually works. What you do want to get is a camera where you can mount a shotgun microphone, something like this. What does this do? It lets you record much better sound. How does it work? You're going to attach it to the top of your camera and it's going to record much clearer sound. If you use just the onboard microphone that comes with your camera, you might end up with a lot of background noise that you really didn't want in your video. So getting a microphone that you can actually point at the subject, me in this case, is very important to get clear good sound. Good sound is maybe even more important than the camera you use. Pretty much anything today will do the job, right? Your cell phone shoots great pictures, it shoots fantastic video, not a problem. The problem really comes in with the sound quality. You're going to want some kind of microphone, you can go with a lapel mic, you can go with a, uh, a shotgun mic, uh, you can even go with the internal microphone of your camera, just make sure that you put something down so that the sound's a little damp, because the sound's going to bounce off of everything in your room. So, we've covered the sound, we've covered the camera. If you didn't add enough light to your scene, no one's gonna be able to see you, so it doesn't really matter how good the camera is, doesn't matter how good the sound is. I mean, imagine watching a picture that's too dark. Sounds great, looks okay, but you can't really make out what's going on because there just wasn't enough light in the room. All right, so you got a couple of options here. One, shoot in front of a window. So for example, I have a window on my left right here, and it's bringing a bunch of light in, filling the scene with light. Natural light is going to be absolutely fantastic. You don't really need much else beyond natural light most of the time, as long as you sit right next to that window. All right, so what happens if it's dark outside or if it's, if it's cloudy and there isn't enough light coming in? Well, you might consider investing in a simple light. There's a couple of options that you can go with right off the bat on Amazon. You could buy a ring light, very inexpensive. It's going to get the job done. You're going to light everything up real nice. You're going to be nice and bright on the camera. It's going to look great. If you want to take it up a notch, you might get yourself a softbox or an umbrella. So if you get yourself a couple of umbrellas, you can light yourself up really nicely, one on each side, you're gonna look great, you're gonna bring in plenty of light, the camera's gonna be able to see you just fine. If you want a nice soft feel, a nice clean, soft picture, you might wanna go with a soft box. So what I'm using right now is I have a soft box right here and I've got a window. So I've got natural light coming in on one side and the soft box is filling in everything else to give me a nice shadow sort of across my face that way. It's extremely important to decide what you want in your shot. You have all the time in the world, so make this look exactly the way that you want. Clean up your area, make sure it's not cluttered. Pick something that's not overwhelming to the viewer, so you don't want uh, a messy background, you want something simple. In my case, I've added this shelf right here, I've put off uh, some of my camera equipment, my drone, and half of that's not even in the shot, really it only goes to about there. And down here, I've got some boxes for my microphones, but everything that I have on that shelf is specific to my shooting of my videos. On the other side, I have my computer set up. Right here, you've got my one monitor. There's a second monitor off screen right here that you can't see. I've got a little light going in the background there that's lighting up my wall, giving a little color into my scene. So this kind of sets my scene a little bit. And then um, besides that, I've got it nice and empty here. I've got just my, my flight diploma up top there. On my desk, I tried to remove all the clutter. I'm down to just a keyboard, a mouse, my computer. Nothing really gets in the way. So you're really in control of what your scene looks like. So take your time with it. Take a look at it after you do a shoot. Take a look and see what you want to take out of the scene. Make it as, as, as unique and as you as you want, but make it as sparse as possible. Less is more. Next thing you're going to want to do is if you're shooting alone, you need somewhere to put your camera, whether you're going to put it on a shelf or whether you're going to hold it. You need some place where it's stable. Nobody wants to see a whole jittery, constant moving camera. Maybe they do. You might want to watch The Office. but. Point is, you're going to want to put your camera somewhere. If you don't have anyone to hold your camera for you, it's a good idea to invest in a tripod. I use a very straightforward older tripod that I've had for many years. Works fine. It's not the greatest tripod in the world, but the camera sits nice and sturdy on top and nice and steady. You can get a very cheap solution from pretty much anywhere. Ordered right off of Amazon and for $20, $30, and you're going to have a tripod that works. Very small investment, 
very big payoff. Your camera's gonna be nice and steady. You don't need another person to hold the camera for you. And you can move around in your shot and use all of both your hands. Okay, so you've mounted your camera on the tripod. You've got your scene set up the way that you want. Everything is perfect. Now let's talk a little bit about framing. So framing is where you are in your shot. Framing is basically how you position yourself in your shot, and what you can see from the camera. This is what your viewer is actually gonna see. You're gonna to wanna to set this up so that you look the way that you want. This is purely subjective, so you can decide how you want this to look. An example of this would be, you could be shooting it with yourself on the left side of your scene and more of your background showing. Or you could be shooting this from the right side of your scene with more of that background showing. Each time you do that, you're gonna have a specific kind of feel. If you're doing an interview style, you might want to place yourself off to one side of the camera, have the other person on the other side, and then you might want to switch between shots from one person to the other. All right, so once you set up your camera, go ahead and look through the viewfinder, look at the screen. If you have one of those cool flip out screens that come to the side and you can see what's going on, right now I'm looking at my screen and I can see exactly how I'm framed and what you can see in the shot. Make sure you take a look at that because that's what your viewer is going to be looking at when they're watching your video. And again, if it's not comfortable or if they kind of feels weird, go ahead and change it around. You can change whatever you want in the scene. It's your scene, right? So this is your studio. Change it, make it look the way that you want it to look, put your own flair in, but bear in mind, less is more. So if you take the clutter out, your shot's gonna look nicer. The next thing I kind of like to concentrate on is my script. So before I start shooting anything, after I've figured out my studio and I figured out all my lights and all that, I've got my, my equipment all set, the next thing I really wanna do is think about what I wanna shoot. So generally I'll jot down a few ideas, or in my case I like to do it in the computer, so I'll have a spreadsheet and I'll put in a couple of ideas that I want to shoot for the next week or two, maybe the next month I'll have a few ideas listed. When it comes to the actual specific idea, I try to script out as much of it as I can, although I hardly ever use the script. It's more of a guide for me and it gives me a chance to put the ideas that I want to tell you about down on paper so I can really think about them and do my research and get the right information for you. It's important to kind of know what you want to talk about. Now, some people do this by just putting bullet points down. I like to write out the entire script, the entire story, everything I'm going to tell you, and then I'll embellish on top of that anyway, but that's kind of how I go just to get the ideas flowing in a smooth straight line for my videos. The next thing I like to do is I like to plan my shots. I may want to move my camera around a little bit. This is going to give more flavor to the video. It's going to make it more entertaining for the viewer and less staticky. You're just looking at a talking head. You don't want to just look at the same thing constantly. It's nice to have a little change once in a while in the shot. Now to get this just right, you might want to mark down the positions of your camera so you can move back between the two shots, or you can shoot the entire thing once, then shoot it again with the other angle, and again with the third angle, so on and so forth, till you get what you want. Personally, I like to shoot everything once, maybe twice anyway, so I might as well shoot everything and then do a couple of other angles on it. You can add some flavor to your video by adding some B-roll. What is B-roll? Well, B-roll is anything that you shoot that you're not talking in, basically. Um, Let's say we were setting up lights and I took some shots of us doing that. That would be B-roll and I could roll that while I'm talking about setting up lights or what kind of lights I use. It's really interesting for people to see. It's a way to give you a look at, at some of the stuff that I'm talking about without actually having to have it in front of the camera when I'm talking about it. So you can get B-roll before or after you shoot. Generally, I like to do it after just because that gives me a chance to get the things that I actually talked about in the video and shoot those. So for example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot some natural light. I'm gonna show you what my window looks like. So when we're talking about the natural light, I can show you what natural light looks like. When we're talking about the light that I have over here, I'm gonna shoot that in its B-roll and I'm gonna show you what that looks like lit up and ready to go. I'm gonna give you a shot of what my tripod looks like, of what my camera looks like, my entire setup, my entire studio, and what I did to set everything up. That's the kind of thing that you wanna do in B-roll. Another way to go with B-roll is to establish a location or to tell people a little bit more about the story. So for example, if I wanted to shoot a shot of the outside of my, uh, of my house, I'm coming in and going into my studio, that'd be interesting B-roll to put in. You might be interested in seeing that. It's a way to establish a scene, a location. It's a way to show people where where you are and it's a way to progress from one location to another or from one scene to another. It's also a great way to show people your, your studio and, and what you're talking about live while you're talking about it so you can cut to that roll that b-roll lay it right on top of your existing footage and people get a sense of what's what you're actually talking about by looking at what, they, what you're talking about, by being able to see what you're talking about. So the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is editing. You're gonna take all this footage that you collect, all this B-roll, everything else that you shot, and you can put it on your computer. You're gonna take it off the, off the disc of whatever you're filming and onto your computer for editing. 
There are many different software packages that you can use for editing, and depending on what kind of computer platform you're on, it may change for you. So if you're on a Mac, you may have iMovie already ready to go, you might have gotten Premiere, you might be using Final Cut Pro. All of those work fantastic. And obviously the Pro software is gonna be a lot more powerful than the iMovie, but the iMovie is generally enough to get you started. If you're on a Windows platform, you might still be using Premiere Pro. You might also be using DaVinci. DaVinci also works on a Mac or on Linux. So it doesn't really matter what platform you're on. You have access to a lot of different pieces of software. And these are just a few that I've used in the past. There's a ton more. Go out there, explore. During the editing process, you're gonna take the clips that you shot earlier and you're gonna cut them down to size. You're gonna get rid of any blank spaces that you don't want. You're gonna find any footage that doesn't look quite right or where you made mistakes and you cut that out. And if there's some sounds and background noises that you don't want in your shot, you might cut that out as well. Once you've done all of that, you're gonna put that all kind of together on a timeline and you might add background music. Personally, I like to add background music just because I think it sounds good to have something sitting there in the back, sort of a music bed just riding through the entire thing. You're going to overlay your B-roll on top of the footage that you shot before into a separate timeline. And the way I like to do it is I like to put the shots that I took of the lights, for example, when I'm talking about the lights and just kind of add them on top. You might put your name right here or you might, you might add some title. So let's talk a little bit about the music that I choose for my videos. I generally like to choose the music first. The reason for that is I like to edit to my music so that it kind of fits in and, and the beats kind of come together and everything's kind of tied in together. So if I do a transition or something, I might want to have a beat happen there so that you can jump on that, that it kind of adds to the interest of the entire thing. If you're shooting a vlog, you might want to add in some sound effects here and there. It all really depends on what you're doing. You might want to really spend a lot of time on creating your soundscape for your entire video. That is, in my opinion, the sound in your video is one of the most important parts of your video. So just leaving it blank and just not paying attention to it, that that's really takes away from the quality that you're producing. Once you're done with your editing, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna export your file. Most software works pretty much the same way. There'll be a button, you export, you wait, file gets created. Depending on what software you're using, there may even be a preset for YouTube, and you can go ahead and use that if you like. Once you're done exporting the file, you're gonna log on to your account and you're gonna upload your video. So as my video is uploading, I generally like to fill out the information that YouTube asks for. Title, description, keywords, once the video is uploaded and I've got all my descriptions and keywords and titles set up and everything looks fantastic, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add my custom thumbnail. If you like this video, click the like button, click on subscribe, ring the bell to be notified. If you didn't like it, give me a big thumbs down. I'll appreciate that as well. Leave some comments down below what you thought and what else you might like to see, and I'll catch you in the next one.